Hi guys, my name is Rock and I spent last 8 years traveling around Europe as a tour guide. I was recently in Dubrovnik, Croatia and I want to share with you my travel tips to help you have the best Dubrovnik experience. I'll show you all you need to know, including when to visit Dubrovnik, how to get there, where to stay, how to get around the city, which ATMs to avoid and much much more. Dubrovnik has four seasons. Mild winters are time of the low season with no crowds and the lowest prices. Winter temperatures hover around 10 centigrade or 50 Fahrenheit, but the winds can make it quite chilly. Winter is the most rainy season and although there is still enough sunshine, I would skip the winter and look at spring between April and June. Temperatures, prices and number of visitors gradually rise and by June sea gets warm enough for a dip. Hot and dry summer starts in July and lasts till September. This is the peak of the tourist season as it is the best time to visit beaches and sea is the warmest reaching around 27 centigrade or 80 Fahrenheit. On the other hand, prices are the highest, crowds are the greatest and the heat is turning sightseeing into a sweaty experience. From second part of September till the end of October, temperatures are dropping. Crowds are gone, but sea still remains warm enough for a swim. My favorite months to visit Dubrovnik are May and June in spring and September and October in autumn. If you need a quick overview of Dubrovnik, check my video Why Visit Dubrovnik in the top corner. Dubrovnik is a small town with about 42,000 people and it is a very safe place. Tourism is the pillar of local economy, so safety and well-being of visitors is everyone's priority. Hotels, private accommodations, restaurants and other services quickly embraced all necessary precautions to minimize the risk of infections. Mugging and kidnapping do not happen in Dubrovnik and the risk of terrorist attack is low. There is no street violence and pickpocketing isn't a problem. Public transportation and taxis are safe and reliable. On the other hand, it is wise to check your change twice and never let your credit card out of sight. I would also avoid you using blue and yellow ATMs from company Euronet that are frequent around the old town. Not only they would give you a bad rate, but they would also charge you a fee. ATMs from local Croatian banks are a much better option. Official language spoken in Dubrovnik is Croatian, although local population speaks a dialect called Dalmatian. English is the most common foreign language and is widely spoken. You should have no trouble using English in hotels, shops, restaurants and sites. Even the smallest and most remote restaurants has English, Italian and German menus as German and Italian are also frequently spoken. Dubrovnik can be reached either by car, bus, ferry or plane. Highway gets you only to Split and from there you have to follow road number 8 known as Adriatic Road. For now, this road takes you to Bosnia for about 10 kilometers before returning to Croatia. But bridge to avoid crossing to Bosnia is being built and will be finished in 2022. Buses use the same route and are connecting Dubrovnik with all larger cities in Croatia. Regular ferry service is connecting Dubrovnik with Italian Bari, Croatian islands of Korčula, Hvar and coastal cities of Split and Rijeka. But the easiest and most affordable way is to fly as Dubrovnik airport is located about 18 kilometers or 12 miles outside Dubrovnik. From the airport, you either go by taxi, transfer service or airport shuttle. Taxi station is right in front of the airport's main entrance and it should cost around 270 kuna or 38 euro. You can also take Uber that will be a bit cheaper. Airport shuttle runs non-stop, stopping along the way at Pila Gate in the old town ferry port and the main bus terminal. Shuttle leaves airport 30 minutes after each flight arrival and costs 55 kuna or 7.5 euro. Dubrovnik is famous for having many family-run places offering apartments, rooms and B&Bs. There are also big and small hotels, youth hostels and even a campsite. Despite its small size, some neighborhoods are quite far from the old town. 
as Dubrovnik was originally built in a narrow space between a mountain and the sea, modern areas had to spread to northwest along the coast. But which areas are the best for your accommodation? Dubrovnik Old Town is completely surrounded by medieval defensive walls and is the most convenient for sightseeing, but it's not the most comfortable option. As the Old Town is a pedestrian-only zone, Accommodation can only be reached on foot and rooms tend to be a bit smaller. In the evening this is also the loudest area as restaurants and bars have tables on street. If budget, street noise and walking are not a problem, this might be the best option for you. Exiting the old town through the western gates you get to Pila neighborhood. This is the final city bus station with taxi stand. Here is Hilton Hotel and B&Bs with wonderful view on Fort Lovrienac. If budget is not a problem, this is the best location. Exiting the old town through eastern gates, you enter Ploče neighborhood. This is elite residential area with great views of the city walls, open sea and Lokram islands. Here you'll find B&Bs and most exclusive Dubrovnik hotels. If budget is not a problem, this is also the best location. Gruš is more affordable neighborhood around a large bay with port of Dubrovnik and Marina. This is mainly a residential area with big supermarkets and affordable restaurants. If you stay here, you need to use bus or taxi to get to the old town. The biggest area of Dubrovnik is located on Lapat Peninsula with most hotels, private apartments and B&Bs. It also has beaches, lovely promenades and walking tracks. In Lapat everyone can find something appropriate as this area is the best compromise between beaches, old town and price. If you want to learn more about different prices and costs in Dubrovnik, check how expensive is Dubrovnik video in the top corner. To get around Dubrovnik you can take bus, taxi or Uber. Buses drive all day in 20 to 30 minute intervals with the exception of the early morning. They are run by Libertas company and can be recognized by its orange and white color. There are 9 different bus lines around town and using them is easy as all lines meet at Pile Gate, Western Gate and the main entry point to the old town. Bus tickets are widely available, including at hotel front desks and can be also purchased on the bus at a bit higher price. Ticket must be validated and it remains valid in all directions for 60 minutes. Many people get Dubrovnik card, special entry ticket to 9 attractions that also includes a daily bus ticket. Taxi service is commonly used and is available around the clock. You can always find taxi waiting on a taxi stand at either Pila Gate or Plaća Gate in front of the old town where you can also find official price list. Uber is also very popular and can even be the cheapest way of transportation if it's shared among three people. If you plan to do a lot of sightseeing, you should get a Dubrovnik card as it includes entry to many museums, galleries and top attractions and makes it a good value as it offers savings of more than 50%. Dubrovnik card also includes the most expensive attraction, walls of Dubrovnik and daily bus ticket. There are three types of card available and if you buy Dubrovnik card online, you can save extra 10%. Once you've purchased an online ticket, you have to pick it up at the Dubrovnik Tourist Board offices by showing your voucher. If you wonder what to do and what to see in Dubrovnik, check my top 10 Dubrovnik video in the top corner. If you have any questions, ideas or even your own tips and tricks about Dubrovnik, please share them in the comments below. If you like this video, give it thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit notification bell so you won't miss my future travel videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.